Do you still think that the strangest things that you can find in the ocean are jellyfish, big octopuses, and sponges? Then keep watching this episode until the end to see alien worms that you couldn't imagine, a creature in the shape of a banana, an alive fir tree, a squid with legs on the head, and many other strange and weird creatures discovered in the depth of the ocean. It's not only living creatures that are found on the ocean floor, but also their remains, including fossils. These are usually fragments that are not distinguished by large sizes. Not so long ago, scientists divers found something that they themselves did not expect. During one expedition, they came across a huge fossil of an unknown creature that was either an ancestor of crocodiles or a sea serpent, or even some kind of hybrid. So far, this is a one-of-a-kind find. But Perhaps scientists will find something else like it in the future. The next finding, though a much smaller one, raises even more questions. About a year ago, scientists found a golden egg in the Pacific Ocean, a few hundred miles from Alaska. Not like in fairy tales, of course, but still very mysterious. The egg was soft and silky, and also had a hole, as if someone had already hatched from it. Another version says that the egg, on the contrary, was someone's home, not a natural incubator. Scientists lifted the finding from a depth of more than two miles, but on the surface it quickly fell fell apart and turned into an unrepresentative slurry. But what is it anyway? There are several theories about it. One theory is that the egg may have been laid by an unknown sea creature. According to another, the egg is an independent organism. Another version suggests that the egg should be just a part of a larger organism or one of the stages in the development of a sea creature. There's also an exotic version, according to which we can see something alien in front of us. UFOologists believe that the discovery may be a associated with UFOs that are periodically found on the seabed. Since we went to such a thing, let's take a look at the alien creature a few months ago. It was stumbled upon in the Gulf of California. It looks like something extraterrestrial. It's hard to describe this creature in any way. So different it is from all the ocean creatures that we're used to. So have the aliens already launched their animals into the world's oceans? This is what many people think that are not very well versed in marine fauna and that will see this creature for the first time. In fact, it's not something alien, but just very strange. It's a Pugaporcinus worm. Amusingly, the unofficial name of the species is the pig butt worm, or flying buttocks. Some similarities do exist. The secret of its rounded shape consists in its segmented body. In part, it's filled with gas. The worm with the pig's buttock prowls the ocean waters without restrictions, using its inflated middle part for buoyancy. It feeds on the remains of various organisms settling on the bottom, and it's capable of short-term bioluminescence to deter predators. In general, apart from its strange appearance, there's nothing really unusual about it. And here's what the next very strange creature looks like that was found in the depths of the Pacific Ocean. It looks like a hybrid of a sea plant, an octopus, and some kind of worm. In general, the sight is as bizarre as possible. It looks more like a creature from a sci-fi movie, but it's real. The marine organism resembles a flower of living flesh. Its stem is attached to the bottom, and it has a length of about six and a half feet. Jagged tentacles depart from it. They're 16 inches long, and they move eerily in the water. No wonder that the depths of the ocean are as poorly explored as space, because this something was stumbled upon only a couple of years ago. There's more to come. Most likely, scientists have discovered a new species of sea feathers. These are such coral polyps belonging to the shooters. That's why this creature looks a bit like a jellyfish. It also reminds me a little bit of a sunflower. What does it remind you of? Write in the comments. We're moving on. And the remains are next in line. Here, the scientists are standing right next to them. What do you think it is? Some might think it's some sort of giant pearl or something, but it's actually a pelvis. Such a huge pelvis belonged to a giant ground sloth. Its remains were found at the bottom of the flooded cave of Hoyo Negro in Mexico. They've been there for 40,000 years. You may wonder, is the sloth terrestrial since it was discovered underwater? Most likely, the sloth simply fell into a deep cave. It flew about 100 feet and it died in the fall. Over time, the cave was flooded. It became part of the water system. And a few years ago, scientists discovered these remains. They have no doubt that the sloth was simply huge in life. One of its pelvises weighed 88 pounds. The sloth itself was 16 feet tall and weighed about a ton. It's incredible what huge and strange animals used to live on our planet. 
Weirdness abounds these days. A few years ago, scientists were exploring the seafloor of the Pacific Ocean and they came across this. The first thought of many of you, like me, is that it's a banana. Agreed, there are some resemblances to this fruit. But this is not a peel that some sailor threw away, but it's a full-fledged living creature, a sea cucumber that lives at a depth of three miles. It's also known as a banana. This is not a particular species, but a whole class of echinoderms related to sea urchins. They look like underwater plants but they're animals. They come in different forms. They look like some spiky sausages, then like colorful slugs, then like swollen underwater flowers. This time we have a sea cucumber in the form of us, a banana. And this species was not named after the fruit. It was dubbed as a banana. As for me, a strange choice. Scientists, however, explained it by the soft-looking body of the creature that is as if molded from the sweet mass and the outgrowth, which looks like a long squirrel's tail. However, sea cucumbers of this species do not only come in yellow, so the name fits. I have more questions about the name of this creature that was found a few years ago in the Gulf of Mexico. The creature looks strange and frightening enough, no doubt, but its name is much stranger. Scientists have dubbed it as the Sea Darth Vader. Is there any resemblance to the Sith Lord? Researchers believe that the resemblance is traced in the unusual shape of the creature that resembles the helmet of Anakin Skywalker, who went to the dark side. But to me, it's doubtful. Suggest your ideas in the comments. Let's call this creature a better name. And to give you a better idea of what to write, there is a giant isopod in front of you. These are large crustaceans, somewhat reminiscent of a woodlouse. These creatures live on the seafloor. Isopods are not called giant for nothing. They serve as a good example of deep sea gigantism. Some individuals can reach almost 32 inches in length, and they weigh about four and a half pounds. Not bad for a woodlouse, right? Darth Vader, on the other hand, was a smaller but also decent, about 10 inches in length, that makes it many times larger than landwood lice. So far, the new isopod is only known from a single specimen, so it's not entirely clear how the new species might stand out. But something tells me it's unlikely to be able to strangle opponents with its strength, wield a lightsaber, and breathe as viciously as a movie villain. Let's go back to the theme of strange ocean creatures with even stranger names. Take a look at this. What do you think this thing is called? Hint, it's also a fictional character, and they recently made a very popular movie about it. For those who answered Oppenheimer, congratulations, you have an imagination, but even too much of it. In fact, this creature was nicknamed Barbie, or rather Barbie the Piggy. Yes, there are not only sea cucumbers, but also guinea pigs. I'm not only talking about rodent pets, the guinea pig is also called Skoda Plains, such a very strange inhabitant of the seafloor. By the way, this is one of the varieties of sea cucumbers that we've already talked about. The new species of Skoto Plains was named after the famous doll because of its pink coloring. Plus, members of the research team watched the movie Barbie on their way to the expedition, and they were inspired by last year's movie hit. The strange creature has piled legs with sausage like fingers. The Barbie pig scours the seabed for food among the silt. Like other Skoto Plains, Barbie feeds on organic matter from bottom sediments. In general, the new species is not very different from other bizarre Skoto planes, except that this time it pleased scientists with an unusual color. As a rule, these sea cucumbers are not so brightly colored. But let's get back to something even stranger and even more alien. Personally, I cannot otherwise describe the following discovery that was made at great depths. The researchers' submersible disappeared over 1.2 miles deep into the abyss of the sea, and it came across this, something transparent, orange, and glowing. Ordinary people, in general, might mistake it for a package that had sunk to the seabed from a notional garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean. There was also a joke theory that it's a plastic bag of aliens they pack some glowing insides into. But of course, it's not like that. You'd be surprised you can see another sea cucumber in front of you. I bet if you knew about their existence, you could not imagine how diverse, strange, and unusual they may be. Interestingly, the packet joke version turned out to be close to the truth. This sea cucumber has a really transparent tubular body. These bright orange tubes and outgrowths, these are really its insides. True, scientists do not yet understand why he has them in such a color but they found out that the transparent creature has an appendage similar to a fin that helps it swim short distances along the seafloor. In fact, that's what the creature was doing when scientists discovered it. 
Shark. Transparent sea cucumbers, giant mochi, and banana-shaped creatures are one thing. But what about a shark? Could it possibly be any weirder? You bet, unless we're talking about the classic catfish that swim close to the surface. A couple of years ago, a fisherman was fishing off the coast of Australia, and he caught a very strange shark from the great depths. It had creepy eyes, a long snout, but most importantly, it looked like it was smiling sinisterly. The find was an incredible surprise, not only for the fisherman, but also for people on the internet. Some people found the smiling shark funny, and some were very frightened by it. Moreover, the shark puzzled the scientists who saw the pictures. They still have not come to a consensus on what species it belongs to. Some thought that it's a Brazilian luminescent shark, and others that it's a gulper shark. There's also an assumption that the fisherman caught a goblin shark, and personally I'm close to this theory. The jaws of the sharks are extended forward, and they may well demonstrate the same creepy smile during the hunt. However, it cannot be ruled out that this is a completely new species of deep sea shark. After all, there are still a lot of strange creatures at great depths. Banded Piglet Squid This is another one of them. As for me, this is one of the strangest creatures, not only in the ocean, but on the whole planet in principle. The body of a fat fish, tentacles on the forehead of the squid, its nickel on the forehead, large bottomless eyes, a cute smile, rather reminiscent of Frankenstein's monster that was molded from anything. But this is not a monster, or even a hybrid of mad scientists. It's a unique creation of nature itself. Despite the fact that this creature mixed everything, it still refers to squid and and unusual and glass or transparent. Yes, in nature there are such sea cucumbers in the form of a bag. They have translucent bodies and visible insides. Despite the fact that the species was discovered more than a hundred years ago, the first photos of this miracle only appeared in 2019. Firstly, it's not very easy to find this small transparent creature of four inches in length in the vast ocean. And secondly, this half pig, half squid lives at great depths. The piggy squid floats in the water columns as in the air. It's filled with ammonium chloride that has neutral buoyancy, so the mollusk doesn't need to make unnecessary movements in order to maintain a comfortable position in the water. The older the squid gets, the deeper it dives and the redder it becomes. Do you think that's all that can surprise this mysterious creature? To me, the craziest part is that those tentacles on its forehead are actually legs, so it swims upside down. And scientists have also discovered that his nickel can glow, but it's not clear why. Whether the squid pig he attracts this way, the other half, or lures to the light of its prey like that, creepy deep sea anglerfish do, that remains to be seen, as well as many other details about this creature. But for me, personally, one thing is certain, it's definitely the most unusual and interesting creature I've met in recent years. Would you be surprised if I told you that you can even find a Christmas tree on the seabed? And not a green one, but of any color? I think it's unlikely, because after watching up to here, you've already realized that you can't find anything in the ocean. This is what another miracle of nature looks like. It may look like a plant, but no, it's an animal, again, this time polychate. Did you think worms had to be nasty and slimy? Christmas tree worms are widespread in tropical seas, and they come in a variety of colors, from red, white, yellow, and blue to red and purple. By the way, these Christmas tree worms have something in common with many people who work in an office. They lead a sedentary lifestyle. They're usually seen with corals on the surface of colonies where they build calcareous tubes. The tubes enclose the body of the worm, and only the gill corolla, growing from a small head, sticks out. Such a neighborhood with corals is an example of symbiosis in nature. Settling on a colony of corals, the worm receives good protection from predators. In turn, its tentacles scare away starfish that feed on corals. Such a mutual defense. Smooth Lumpfish This sea creature has nothing to do with motorcycles. Its second name is the Smooth Lumpfish. The main feature of this creature is not in its appearance, but in the fact that it does not swim well. Yes, you've not misheard. It's a fish that doesn't swim well. It happens. The lumpfish stays near the bottom, and if you have to get somewhere, it does it very slowly and unhurriedly, and sometimes it swims with jerks. It was compared to frogs with their trademark jumps. At the same time, the Smooth Lumpfish should not be underestimated, at least those who live with it in the same environment. It's a good hunter, and it feeds on jellyfish, scallops, crustaceans, echinoderms, and many other creatures. Later on, I'll tell you about the ones of the rarest and most unusual creatures on the planet. You've never seen anything similar. Greenland Shark March 13, 
2022, they encountered such an interesting finding on the coast of Great Britain. It was clearly the body of one of the sea creatures, but whom exactly? The witnesses could not specify. On the one hand, this creature bore strong resemblance to a shark. On the other hand, it was not like any species that was known to everybody. Maybe it's a mutant unknown to science, one of the tourists said. Not at all, answered scientists, that interfered in the discussion as soon as the shot was uploaded to the internet. Relying on specialists, for sure, it was the body of a Greenland shark, the most northern and cold-resistant one. At most, this shark can be 21 feet long, according to what's officially recorded. Other specimens are also rather big. What's more, they're united due to their sluggishness and love for fish and carrion. The most interesting thing about this shark is its life expectancy. According to the analysis of the scientists, the Greenland sharks can live at least 272 years. The age of the biggest sharks found was estimated at more than 500 years. Yes, the white sharks they talk about so often are really small compared to the Greenland sharks. Not only in terms of dimensions, but also in terms of life expectancy. By the way, it's because of their longevity that these sharks are covered with strange pigment spots and many wrinkles. Mildly speaking, it's a repulsive show. However, some scientists consider that it's because of this ugly coloration why many predators are afraid of attacking them. The second reason for their longevity is, of course, their slow metabolism. What's interesting, this shark has not only sluggish digestion, but also aging. Let it swim no quicker than several miles per hour. However, it does very well in the icy waters. At the same time, when it becomes too cold, slow metabolism doesn't help. This is where trimethylamine comes in. This is a substance that's contained in tissues and helps stabilize ferments and structural proteins that would not function properly because of a low temperature and high pressure. Put it simply, crystals in the blood are not formed with this. By the way, I remember this dreadful fact about these sharks. Do you want me to tell you about it? Can you see their eyes gleaming? It's not their eyes that shine, but parasites who feed on the shark. In such an event, the predator is not against this scenario. The thing is that it rests at a great depth with just a little light. Because of that, even the slightest ray that attracts attention will be useful. Other fish swim to this strange gleaming in the pitch darkness and turn into a meal for the shark. I'm sure that after all these unusual and even frightening facts about the Greenland shark, you've thought that there are no stranger sharks in the world. Well, the concept strange is rather biased. As far as I'm concerned, the frilled shark seems to be even more weird. We start with the fact that it hunts like a snake, bending its body and making a sharp jerk forward. Long and movable jaws allow it to swallow a large prey, whereas multiple rows of small and needle-sharp teeth do not let it break away. The cephalopod, bonefish, and even other sharks are swallowed by this monster. The only pleasant piece of news is that the frilled shark is not as long, 23 feet, its size is restricted to just 6 feet. It's the subject of awe spring where this shark outperformed and even occupied the first place. To be exact, it's pregnancy duration. The frilled shark can carry offspring for up to three and a half years, with being the longest among the invertebrates. It's strange enough, but the shark was named so due to its wide skin wrinkles formed by gill fibers that cover clefts. By the way, in total there are six such clefts on each side. Though you know what I would call this fish differently? The liver shark. It seems to me that it would suit it better. It has a giant liver. The organ is full of high-density lipids. Due to this, the shark can successfully live at a great depth without making any physical efforts. But if you think that there are no more surprising sharks, I'll be in a hurry to convince you otherwise. It's the carpet shark that'll help me, aka the Wobegon shark. In the meantime, this strange name goes back to one of the Aborigines languages in Australia and means the bushy beard. In contrast to our two previous guests, the fish spends its life in shallow waters in the seas of the moderate and tropical belts in the western part of the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean. How can you survive in shallow waters? You're right, you have to be able to hide. Our guest really resembles an old carpet in the entrance hall, worn at the edges from many years of use. As a rule, the carpet shark hides somewhere between rocks, crevices, or close up to seaweeds. Even despite the fact that the fish is long enough, up to 10 feet, it successfully blends in with the environment. The camouflage that suits the color of the landscape serves both as an excellent protection and cover. In the course of evolution, the carpet shark was even provided with outgrowths to be able to disguise as 
as something dreadful and inedible. It may seem that the shark needs all of this to live peacefully and quietly and not to engage in battles. Not at all. You should remember that it's still a shark. If those big sharks generate noise and show off, then the carpet shark, on the contrary, prefers stillness and quietness. Hiding on the bottom, the fish lightning quickly catches up with its victim in a single jerk and can be hardly noticed. It doesn't require a lot of energy. It's quite enough. Then, actually, it comes to a meal. After all, after the attack, the victim will highly likely end up in the mouth of the carpet shark. Moreover, even if the shark does not succeed in hunting and the enemy manages to escape from it with a strong desire to survive, the former will not stand a good chance to survive. The thing is that the teeth of the carpet shark easily fall out of its jaw even after light loads and stay in the wound. It's very difficult to take them out without a surgery, whereas there are hardly any underwater doctors. Yes, those lost teeth are quick at growing back. That's why the carpet shark doesn't lose anything. Rare and unusual sharks are exciting, of course. However, there are a lot of other incredible creatures in the world you've never guessed that they exist. It's them that I'll tell you about right now. Keep watching until the end. It'll be interesting. In the first instance, I would like to tell you about fluffy, rather cute outside creatures from outside, but very dangerous velvet ants. In fact, though they're called ants, they do not have anything to do with them. They were given this name exclusively because of the formal resemblance of their wingless form. Yes, the velvet ant, despite its name, is actually a type of wasp belonging to the family Mutilidae. These creatures live in southern steppe regions. Interestingly, they've been living there for a long time. They say people found the remnants of these pseudo-ants in rocks that were 40 million years old. It's curious, but even despite this, nobody studied these velvet ants properly. Biologists make excuses by saying that it's very difficult to find them. However, something hints to me that they're just afraid of something. The main thing is that scientists managed to learn about these wasps that have made clear-cut sex dimorphism. In other words, males and females differ from each other a lot. Males, for example, have a keen eyesight up to two inches long dress in dim colors, and are perfect at flying. The females are blind, approximately twice as small as males, dress in bright colors, and spend almost all their life on the ground without wings. Here you'll think, how can it be like this? All right, males can survive because they're capable of flying and possibly because of strong eyes, but how do females exist? They don't fly, they're so small and at the same time blind. It's some kind of magic. I can say this has nothing to do with magic. This is where their secret weapon comes in, consisting of their strong armor. Birds and mammals find it incredibly difficult to cope with it. A second factor that allows females to survive is their sting. It's considered that these insects are holders of one of the most dangerous stings among all wasps. They hurt a lot. They're often extremely painful, but they're low toxic or low lethal and play a protective role. It went so far that one of the species of these wasps were called cow killers. It's an exaggeration nonetheless. Xenophyophore. This is how our next guest from this episode was called. It's no fish, no flying creature, it's even no big predator. What can it be? I'll say that it's a surprising representative of the one-celled organisms living beneath the ocean at a depth of more than 34,000 feet. Besides the point, the Xenophyophore grows up to 8 inches long. Taking into account that this is a one-cellular organism, it's astounding. Needless to say, it becomes such a strong man, the creature had to be cunning and learn to forage for a lot of food. As far as the latter is concerned, it's the simplest thing. After all, xenophyophores inhabit areas that are full of ooze and deep water snow in the form of organic remnants falling to the bottom. For us, complex endothermic multicellular organisms, this food is considered to be rather poor in quality and low in calories. However, it's enough for slow xenophyophores. Another issue is not so easy to solve. How can a one cellular creature learn to survive under such a big pressure? What if it just bursts? To prevent that from happening, our one cellular overgrown creature makes a shield from sand. It produces flexible organic fibers, coating itself with sand on its own and securing this with cement of its own production. Truth be told, mildly speaking, this doesn't look good. On the other hand, who cares about their appearance? The main thing is that functions. Apart from a strange body structure and huge depth they live at, these organisms can also be soaked with radioactive salts. It's not quite clear why they concentrate so much toxic substances in themselves. Possibly this is the way they protect themselves passively. After all, it'll be enough just to taste Xenophyophore and this meal will be the last one in your life.
Yes, I did not expect that an ordinary, one cellular organism could be so interesting and different from somebody else. By the way, speaking of uniqueness, now I'll tell you about a spider that does not resemble arthropods we're all used to. This is the Misumina, or aka the crab spider. By the way, the creature got its second name for its ability to move sideways. Male spiders grow up to 1.6 inches long, whereas female spiders are less and do not exceed a centimeter in length. In the meantime, this is not their only difference. Male are dressed in black, white, and brown colors, whereas females prefer white, yellow, and pale green colors. Moreover, Misumina can change its coloration on the way like a chameleon. She exudes pigments and almost at once blends in with vegetation. It's obvious that the crab spider needs this peculiarity to survive. To be exact, it's necessary to disguise with the purpose to attack or hide from more dangerous creatures. Concerning the menu of our guest, it usually consists of pollinating insects that sit on its flower and do not even suspect that they have a starving spider. Instead of weaving a web, Misumina ambushes its victim. One blow is enough to send the insect to glory. The only thing is that you'll have to wait a little until the toxin injected in the enemy has dissolved everything properly. Resplendent Quetzal This is what our next guest is called. In conjunction, it's the biggest from the Quetzals and all the Trogons. The overall length of this beauty accounts for 1.3 feet. The bird is ancient and highly respectful. The Aztecs that encountered these creatures have borrowed their feathers to decorate their headdresses. Its presence was a feature of high status. Quetzal almost fully consists of a codia fruit, a rather spread tropical tree. However, Quetzal eats fruit of other trees as well. In one of the nature reserves, for example, the bird tasted at least 41 species of plants. It goes without saying that it's not the most interesting thing about the bird. All its juice is in its appearance. Have you ever encountered a feathered pangolin? Now you have. Unfortunately, this bird does not often make people happy with its look while flying. All free time, this Guatemalan beauty sits on trees with its head retracted and tail down. This behavior helps the bird's disguise with the coloration blending in with green vegetation in spite of its bright color. I'm sure that people who saw this bird for the first time thought that they found a mythical creature, so different from the others the creature was. Here's one who won't boast its uniqueness, at least concerning its name, it's the European eel. From the outside, it cannot surprise with its uniqueness. Take it from me, it's not the fact. At least if you figure out the nature of this creature, it'll become clear. Firstly, it's listed in the Red Book. Secondly, it grows up to four feet and weighs up to 14 and a half pounds. And thirdly, that surprised me most, it can get about five miles. No, stop, 5,000 miles just to mate and then die. So that to succeed in such a world tour, they have their blood enriched with an increased dose of cortisol. This substance is also called the stress hormone. It's necessary for the European eels to completely reorganize their organism to make this trip possible. They regulate their carbohydrate metabolism in blood, change color, and do not hunt at all, living on their fat deposits. That's about it. Write in the comments which deep sea water inhabitant struck you most of all. For more information, watch other videos.